best strategic move from a struggling retailer. Let's go to the longtime consultants to start this one off. David Brown. Yeah, so not really a struggling retailer, but I, I do think this is one of the, the best moves that was made. And, and I, mm -hmm. I feel bad about doing it because uh, Chris, you're going to love this. It's just giving you more arrows in your for your, your Doug Love Fest. But okay. uh, I, I think everything that Walmart's done in the last year around inventory uh, yeah. has been fantastic, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they, they took a big write-off early. They've got inventories down where every other retailer right now is going to end up writing off massive amounts of inventory uh, at the end of the year, or you know, have to push it through you know significant more discount uh, than they were anticipating. Uh, Walmart's in a fantastic position, right? And just uh, their inventories are down; they're stable. Uh, they have the right products on the shelf. So I think everything that they've done around inventory the last year is, uh, has really positioned them exceptionally well. Yeah, it's great. You can tell you can tell Doug's getting better with age as the CEO too. It's not his first rodeo. He knows when to pull the triggers on certain things at the right time. So, uh, David Brown, do you what? I mean, David Ritter, excuse me. Uh, what what what's your uh, uh who's your award winner here for best strategic move move from a struggling retailer or just best strategic move in general? So I think the jury's still out on this big time, but I think it was uh, a, re a retailer that needed to make a hail mary. So I thought Overstock.com buying uh, Bed Bath uh, and Beyond IP yeah. was a really yeah. interesting move. I mean, for years Overstock had struggled because of its its brand didn't match its business, right? And mm -hmm. I thought uh, I thought it was an innovative try, right? And we'll see if it if it works. But but just from a strategic kind of repositioning perspective, uh, I thought it was pretty pretty thoughtful. Yeah, that that's a really good one. Yeah, and the jury's still out on it. Yes, I know we talked about that, and we're very optimistic ourselves about. Um, how that could position overstock now Bed Bath & Beyond for the long term. That's a good good ad here. And what do you think? Mine was Peloton teaming up with Lululemon. Um, I really? Think I'm surprised Pel by that. You were kind of harsh. you were kind of so-so on that when they made that announcement. Well, I think that I, I don't know that I was I, I just think it's going to do more for Lululemon than it is for Peloton. But I think that if that Peloton really was struggling toward the middle of this year, and I think that it's a really smart partnership on both sides. It kind of gives uh each of them something that they needed once Lululemon dropped mirror this year and didn't have the content you have Peloton coming in strong and kind of being that giving that expertise to Lululemon um, and then Lululemon being able to just put all their apparel you know front and center and really give people a brand that they know and love I mean there's already people spending on Peloton apparel but I think that this really levers that up a little bit and gives them some more um, clout in that space and I mean I've seen to all my instructors. They're like calling out the Lululemon every Are single they? time that you do uh, one of the rides or one of the workouts. I mean, they are they are being very overt about the fact that this is Lululemon. I love how this fits. Like even mm. just like almost pitches more that I think is going to help Lululemon in the wrong, long run. So it's so it's kind of like best strategic move by a thriving retailer. Then in a lot of ways, with in, Lululemon being the yeah the winner for both here. of them yeah. for both yeah. of them yeah. I think there's still yeah. room for activations and other things too, which we haven't quite seen yet, but I think that Peloton coming into the Lululemon space too could be something yeah. that we see next year. It's got to give them some tailwind too. Yeah. That's interesting. So I, so both yours and David Ritter's are, are, are two uh, moves I considered, but I'm going to go out on my own here on this one too. So mine is actually the move or the decision that Amazon made to halt its grocery expansion. They put the brakes on that pretty significantly. And I think it's smart because Quite honestly, they don't know how to do grocery. Um, and they were trying to do too many things at the same time. They were trying to learn how to run a grocery store while also trying to get customers to shop it in an entirely different way through its just walkout technology. That's an almost impossible task when you step back and think about it. So I think they've made the right moves. They slowed it down. They brought in some really strong outsiders to try to re-enliven the experience and in, in, in the grocery stores wherever they are currently in operation to see if they can make them better. But I still think it's going to be an uphill battle. Um, and that's why the other part of this announcement that I think I love is that they've overtly shifted their focus to licensing the tech. Like they've mm -hmm. licensed the tech to airports, events, hospitals. You talked about Amazon One as well, the Pompeii system too. I think that's the smarter move and it's more in the ethos of what Amazon has traditionally always been about.